Hi, my name is Dennis Glavis. I'm the owner of Morgan West. We are a factory authorized, new and pre-owned and restoration center for the Morgan Mother Company. And let me give you a tour of the uh, cars in the facility, if I may. This is one of our new products. This is the Morgan three-wheeler. It has been in production since 2011. After being out of production since 1952, uh, the first one's built in 1909. Uh, the Morgan Mother Company was the world's largest manufacturer of three-wheeled vehicles for many, many years before uh, the war, World War II. Uh, this is what's known as the Heritage Edition. It's a limited edition uh, done to have the vintage look. Uh, next, this is a Morgan Aero Supersport. This was Morgan's attempt at an Art Deco design by Matthew Humphreys, uh, inspired by Charles Morgan uh, in discussions and drawings. And 33 of these were brought to America and they've proven to be amongst the most collectible of Morgans. Uh, this one we just found and are offering for sale. It's never been registered. Uh, we sold it new to a collector who has or had seven of them and uh, it's only got 100 miles. It's a magnificent car. Utilizes a BMW 4.8 liter V8 um, and being a Morgan all aluminum body, uh, advanced aluminum chassis and suspension. Uh, it, it's extremely fast. Top speed about 175, uh, zero to 60 at about four seconds. Uh, plus the design is just breathtaking. Next, uh, this is an extremely rare and eccentric vehicle. It's a 1932 Morgan three-wheeler delivery van. Uh, it utilizes a V-twin, one liter MX-4 engine with a two-speed bevel box. No transmission, just like Fraser Nash, a sliding bevel that selects one of two chains. Uh, if you want to back up, you get out of it and you push it. That's the way they were built until uh, the very late 20s. Uh, I chased this particular vehicle for years and years. Uh, it was in Los Angeles and then went to Ron Garner, mad about Morgans in uh, Rhode Island, Massachusetts border, who's a dear, dear friend, lifelong almost. And he restored it, had it for about six years. His daughter, is a beer maker so what they did was they converted the rear to a pub uh, it can hold two barrels of whatever suds she's been brewing and queen victoria will pour you a pint the other interesting features that the dash is absolutely crazy the number of instruments uh, and you'll see a white porcelain hand in front of the driver. That is a mechanical turn signal where the right hand will point for right hand turns because that was the only turn it was necessary to have oncoming traffic aware of in England. Driving on the left side of the road, lefts, you're just staying on the left. Uh, I mean, everything on this is so fascinating. Uh, including the way it drives and leaks oil. Uh, next, this is one of the last built new 3.7 liter V6 Roadster component cars. Um, it's done in the new racing blue that Morgan utilizes on the factory team cars. Uh, they're rated at about 290 horsepower uh, with a six speed um, Mustang GT transmission and engine actually. Uh, fabulous car, fabulous car. It should be going to a, a client in Costa Mesa shortly. Now, if you'll follow me.
Ah, let me show you one more thing. Love these on it. The uh, pterodactyl, as it's fondly known. It's actually a stork that was used on uh, 20s and 30s Morgan three-wheelers. Uh, I've got one as a filial on an old lamp in my house, but uh, its uh, nickname is the pterodactyl. This is another new Morgan three-wheeler. Um, another customer car recently sold. Uh, it's a special edition we created uh, called the Hawker Hurricane and it features the logos of the RAF Hawker Hurricane Fighter Squadron from World War II. That's the uh, 258th Fighter Squadron, uh, which was very successful in uh, combating mostly uh, ME 109s uh, trying to bomb and invade England. Um, these two are new V6 3.7 liter roadsters. Uh, this one will be going to far northern California. This one will be going to uh, a happy couple in Nashville, Tennessee. And my wife's car that I drove in this morning. This is the first of the V6 Roadsters. Uh, it was a 2005. I gave it to her for Valentine's Day uh, back in 2005 or 2006. And uh, it featured a three liter Ford V6. She's put about 28,000 miles on it. It's an absolutely fabulous car. I mean, it's just draws attention. Uh, its nickname is Elvira for obvious reasons, and uh, it, it's just part of what makes Morgan so uh, entertaining and uh, endearing. This is my Plus 4 demonstrator, which I configured to have a bit of a vintage look, being two-tone, uh, the old style snap around instead of drop head style uh, hood or bonnet. Well, the bonnet on this would be the front pieces uh, hood. Uh, this is a limited edition, what they call plus four the works. A uh, bit of a tweaked motor, uh, competition exhaust, competition wheels and tires. Only about 40 of these were built for the world. Uh, we supplied uh, the two here in the US, this one and another local client with a uh, green one. Uh, I have a, a very special car here I'd love to share because uh, of its rarity and the story that goes with it. What we have here is a 1936 Morgan 4-4 Series 1. This was the 25th four-wheeled automobile, this very car that the Morgan Motor Company built. What they did is they took their latest three-wheeler, the F-Type, and they just put a solid axle in the back with two wheels. And that's how they developed this automobile. Uh, this belongs to a, an American who lives in London. He keeps the car with us and comes to Los Angeles uh, before the COVID, uh, about twice a year, we keep the car uh, gassed up, running perfect, and this is his only car he uses for the month that he stays here in LA. Uh, these very early 1936 models had suicide rear hinge doors. Uh, the next year they went to front hinged, which they continued with the exception of the drop head models. Uh, it does make it a bit easier for ingress and egress. Um, this was the earlier model 4 slash 4 powertrain. It's a 1172 Coventry Climax rated at about 38 horsepower. Just a, a beautiful little jewel of an engine. Uh, these, I, I drove this and showed it at the uh, Rodeo Drive show. It's uh, just a sweet driving car, uh, very similar to a TC 
a um, little bit more character, I think, in this car. So uh, proud to share it with you. All right, and last but not least, this is a beautifully restored 1963 Morgan Plus Four. Um, it was a every nut and bolt restoration done actually about 17 years ago by a fellow in Ohio. I sold it to uh, a gentleman who uh, just doesn't drive very much anymore and he's kept it in absolutely perfect, perfect uh, running and cosmetic condition. Uh, as nice as any vintage plus four I've seen. Just uh, these were the most sought after in terms of the most popular Morgans of the 50s and 60s, the plus four. They utilized the standard Triumph engine that became the TR3, TR3A, TR4, TR4A engine. Uh, a, a true tractor engine, a stump puller with the Moss gearbox. Uh, it's kind of a crash box, no synchro in first marginal synchros elsewhere, but really durable, really strong and reliable. Uh, I used to commute from Los Gatos to uh, Santa Monica, LA every weekend in my 53 plus four, uh, which doubled as my race car, uh, doing 95 miles an hour. I, I would put 950 miles every weekend on that car, uh, driving round trip, it never broke down, but once and I still made it home because uh, I knew how to just tap on the fuel pump. <laughs> you always make it home in the Vintage Morgan. Uh, beautiful car, represents uh, the best of Morgan. All Morgans really represent the best of Morgan. They're all delightful. Uh, there's a twin to this car that's just covered 8,000 miles of European driving uh, by another one of our clients uh, during uh, last summer. Never broke down, never had a, a mishap. Uh, they're just marvelous cars. People, as I said, drive them cross country. They make friendships for life uh, just because these cars get in your bloodstream. They infect your DNA or affect your DNA. And uh, it's a good thing. It makes a better life for those who own and drive them. And thanks for coming by Morgan West.